So today, I want to talk about Encanto, which I know like everyone's talking about, but I actually want to do a deep dive over analysis regarding the themes and characters because that's just what I talk about. Okay, so, um, well, I'll just do a quick review. I loved it. I encourage anyone to watch it. Thus concludes my review. I do have a lot of notes, uh, so I apologize if I'm looking down, but I want to quote some things directly, so I want to make sure I wrote them down. Okay, so Encanto is this really adorable animated film from Disney that came out um, sometime late 2021 and takes place in Colombia. I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about um, Colombian cultures, so there are a few things I noticed, but I really just rather talk about like the overarching themes, which I think translate well throughout most cultures, um, which does make it more relevant, I think. Um, so the story is about the Madrigal family, which is a multi-generational family that is living in this um, city that was created through like this horrible tragedy. Um, and from this horrible tragedy was born this magical gift specifically in in a candle or that is shown through a candle and uh it created this like i don't know there's a word for it it's a it's a village that's surrounded by like mountains so it's, it's like a very si very safe area where these people who were running um i'm assuming it's it's in uh la valencia which was like a colombian civil war in the 1950s so it was, you know, this, you know, these people who were displaced from a civil war and they found this safe haven and they are protected by magic, which is awesome. And this one particular family, the Madrigals, uh, have the candle and uh, Abuela, I believe her name was Alma, I'm not sure, her, she has triplets. And each of her three children, her two daughters and son, were given a gift when they turned, I'm assuming it's when each kid turns about five years old, they get a door. And when they open the door, they get a magical gift and they get a bedroom that kind of matches up with whatever gift they're given. Um, the two daughters, Julieta and Peppa, each have three children and, and all three of Peppa's children have gifts and two of Julieta's children have gifts. The main character is Mirabelle and she is Julieta's youngest child. I had to think about that for a second. Um, I'm, ooh, I got a lot to say about this. Why am I, why am I like this? Okay, so Mirabelle, she uh, does not have a gift. So I think this film really has two main themes, which one does not, uh, Mirabelle not having a gift does not necessarily, it, it does impact the other one, but is not necessary for the other theme to exist. The other theme being uh, the cracks in the house are basically a visualization of this generational trauma. Um, and I'll, 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 get, I'll get more into both of these things. So Mirabelle uh, does not have a gift. And the theme in that is saying, you know, it's okay to not be extraordinary. It's, it's okay to not be outstanding, to not have something like special about you. You can be ordinary and you still matter. You still have purpose. You can still contribute. Um, this movie very much is about, um, well, they say it's really pro like the town and, you know, we all need to like, the, the gifts matter because they help the town and the towns are lying on the Madrigal family. Um, and we really, I mean, honestly, we really only see that with Luisa, but I'll get into that too. But you can still contribute to your community regardless of your abilities. Um, and you, most importantly, you still deserve love and you're still worthy of love. And not having a gift does not make you worth any less. And especially does not make you worthless. 
um, which is really lovely. So I'm not going to go into any kind of theories as to, you know, did Mirabelle actually have a gift or um, what would her gift have been or why she didn't have a gift because honestly, that doesn't matter and focusing on that kind of misses the point. She doesn't have one. She's not going to get one and that's okay. That's the point, that it's okay to not. And I think that this is a theme that people can relate to on like so many different facets. Um, I was reading an article someone wrote uh, who is on the spectrum and she was relating it to being on the spectrum and being the only person in her family on the spectrum and living with people who aren't and how difficult that is or can be at times for her. Um, if I think that this could be an easy parallel for, you know, maybe someone who is hearing impaired or visually impaired or um, um, handicapped or so many different things and living in a family where nobody else has anything like that and feeling a little bit outcasted, but also just like someone who does feel outcasted or someone who um, has a family of musicians and, you know, they can't even play a flute. You know what I mean? Like, there's just so many times and so many different ways and facets that someone could relate to Mirabelle because I think through one moment or another, um, and unfortunately even sometimes prolonged, uh, time, everyone's felt like an outcast amongst their family here and there. Um, yeah, so that's just like a really lovely, theme and it's not like the first time we've seen this but usually when we do see stuff like this at the end the character gets a gift and they kind of undo all the goodwill that 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 thematic element was supposed to build up so I love that she doesn't because usually in a movie they would so a plus on that further we see that we see the downside of not having a gift in in Mirabelle how she feels like she needs to work harder than everyone else um, to, to contribute. And we see that, we see how Abuela treats her. And I'll, again, I'll get into that later. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, because she didn't get a gift, we see how the town kind of treats her and stuff like that. And they all, they're real shady. They kind of rub it in her face. It's not healthy or nice, damn. But we also see that, for the characters who have a gift, that that's not always spectacular. Um, so Abuela says, uh, we swear to always help those around us and earn the miracle that somehow found us. And it's really with great power comes the responsibility. And you know, they have, it's very puritanical, I think, view um, of, of you have to like earn this thing. But that's the thing about a gift, like you just have it. Like, people who are good at drawing, like, you can practice and be better, but, like, you have to have that that talent there from the get-go. You know what I mean? So, it's like that, like, I appreciate they're saying that they want to put their gifts to service, but if you think about all the characters in the, in the Madrigal family, Louisa is the one doing the most. Like, she certainly has the most um, pressure, and she's the one who's who has all these chores she has to do to help the town and everyone's asking her to do this and that, even in the family as well as amongst the town. Um, Camillo, you know, he's like, I don't know, he, he seems like he helps other people. Like he helped a mother like calm her kid. Um, I don't know what Dolores is doing to help the town. I don't know what Isabella is doing to help the town. I don't know what Pepe is doing to help the town. I can certainly see so. Julieta's gift, I'm sorry. Free, effective healthcare? Yes, please. She's definitely helping. There we go. But it seems like no one else is really helping that much. And uh, with Isabella, you know, she has this arranged marriage with Mariano, I think his name was. And I believe Alma, Abuela, says that uh, she'll break when it's, it's found out that he wants like five kids, she says that she'll bring a new generation of gifts where it's like her power doesn't necessarily help the town per se, but her having more kids and a new generation of gifts could help the town. So she's really as useful as having a uterus. Shady, shady, shady. So yeah, having, having a gift does seem like this double-sided blade where because of Abuela really emphasizes, 
she focuses so much on the gift that that becomes really all these characters are able to have a personality on. So like you don't like Louisa, like she is because she's strong, she needs to be of service. And she wonders like, what would it be like to go on vacation? And like, what do I matter? Who am I without this? Like, she literally doesn't even know, um, which is so sad. And if you look at the bedrooms, the bedrooms is something I found very bothersome. So when they're like, they're about five years old when they go to the door and they get their gift. And we see with Antonio and with Isabella that their rooms reflect their gifts. I want to know what Peppa's room looks like. But anyway, um, so it's basically saying whatever gift they have seemed to be a little bit based on their personality. Because like Antonio really likes animals and then he got a gift that he could talk to animals. But it's like, that's not the only thing that exists about this kid. That's not the only thing that exists. Like... Liking flowers is not the only thing that exists about Isabella, right? Being strong isn't the only thing that exists about Louisa. Um, I don't, being emotional isn't the only thing that exists about Pepe, right? But it's like they get like just the only – everyone views them based on their gift. And so they don't really – they're not really able to grow as a human being with, with a personality and likes and dislikes beyond how they're viewed as by their gifts which is unfortunate, but it's even more unfortunate when you realize, like, you know, Bella, right? She still lives in the nursery. She's, like, 15. Um, that's I got that on Disney uh, Wikipedia. Um, so she's supposed to be about 15 years old. She, if you look at, like, the wallpaper, it has, like, the alphabet, which is fine for someone like Antonio's age and even a little older, but, like, at 15, she doesn't get to redecorate her room, which, at, you know, when you go from, like, junior high or like elementary school to junior high you probably changed your room a little bit like you stopped you know playing as much with like your little kid toys and you started to grow up a bit and start mature a bit and to start having different interests but she's stuck and confined in this childhood room never being allowed to grow because she didn't get a gift but those with the gift were only allowed to grow so much as to grow into this one facet of their personality which was their gift was based on and that's like both sides of that really suck i also wanted to say that with louisa i really loved that they made this strong physically strong character a girl they made this character who you know is ashamed to admit they cry and is afraid to be seen as weak a girl because we we hear a lot about this in it as it pertains to boys of, you know, boys not being allowed to be emotional or vulnerable. But the thing is, girls get that too. Fun fact. That's very real. That's put on girls too. You hear things um, like you're being too sensitive. You're being hysterical. You usually don't tell a boy they're being hysterical. But girls and women get that all the fucking time. Uh, you're overreacting. Um, it, you don't be such a girl. And that's said in a negative way. Because being a girl is negative. Like, all of those things that boys hear, fucking girls do too. About their emotions. First of all, let people cry. Especially children. Like, if a kid... Like, it takes... Controlling your emotion is a learned ability. It takes time to be able to do it. And shutting children down from having a tantrum tantrum doesn't fucking help. It just doesn't. And I think we do need to start talking about, like, people feel things and that's okay it is okay to cry and I, I really like that this we're we're hearing this whole story from a strong you know late teens girl young lady like that's that really impressed me and I really 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 liked that okay um I mean, I guess I could get into, okay, well, before I get into Abuela, I want to talk about Peppa and Julieta. Julieta, like, I love that, like, mom's cooking heels. Like, there's just something so sweet about that and so real. And then Tia Peppa, I feel so bad for her. Like, her, um, like, her power is tied to her emotions in, like, such a severe way. Like, imagine being upset and then every time you're upset, you're wet. That that's the worst. That is the actual fucking worst. Um, I feel like, I don't feel like we got enough of Tia's children. I mean, we get a bit with Antonio, who's like the cutest child 
ever. Um, Camillo, the, the chameleon, I'm assuming that that was a play on words. Um, I, he seemed fun. And then Dolores, I need to know more about Dolores for sure. Um, I know she likes Mariano and she knew Bruno was in the walls. Oh, I'm going to talk about Bruno. She knew he was in the walls, but never mentioned it. Um, I have a theory about that. I honestly think she never mentioned it because she saw how upset it made her mother. So she never wanted to bring it up and cause trouble. That's just a theory. But anyway, oh, side note, I also have a theory on um, why Augustine's always getting bitten, bitten, stung by bees. I think there's so many bees around because Isabella's growing all those damn flowers. Yeah, that's right. The bees are attracted to the flowers. Poor Augustine. Anyway, okay. So I guess I'll get on to Abuela. We'll talk about playing favorites. Um, pay, playing favorites is not healthy when you have a lot of children. <laughs> Um, and it, she really limited all of the kids' potentials by viewing them based on what gift they have. And she totally gaslit Mirabella to kind of put on a face and save face. And she, and by doing so, she made all of these kids just feel really bad about themselves. And she didn't see the person. She just saw their, their gift, their power, their potential. And that's really really effing unfortunate but with abuela that we get what the other theme of this story is and that is generational trauma she lost her home and her husband when her children were very very young and that is a pain that is difficult to imagine and that of course will cause you know, security issues. She puts so much on this gift and on her home. And that is everything to her to the point where she lost sight of what was actually important. The people behind the powers. Um, really, I think all, all the crack and the foundation could have been solved if she just, you know, stopped and pulled a Mr. Rogers and said, you know, you're special just the way you are. And we do have a line like that. You are perfect just like this. You are just as special as anyone else in this family. And we do see that it's, you know, it's hard to feel that way when everyone makes you feel like you're less. Because when you're surrounded by special, you feel worthless. Um, that's another quote from, from Mirabelle's song. And it's just very, it's just sad. And so that brings me to Bruno and Isabella, really. Um, I like that the cracks, I think, personally, I think they started before Mirabelle didn't get her powers. I think they started um, because of how people were treating Bruno, because he had a power and he was just a human being that maybe was a little socially awkward. And he had this very heavy burden of a power that he didn't really understand himself and it certainly was not very well understood by his family and the people that surrounded him and so he felt like he wasn't helping and he was made to feel like an outcast very similar to Mirabelle so that's why I, I think it's really great that regardless of you know whether you had a power like Bruno or didn't have a power like Mirabelle um if you're not being seen as being useful you're still outcasted, which is why I like that these themes are running parallel to each other. And yeah, it kind of is, you know, Mirabelle not having a power does impact the, the cracks in the foundation, but that's not what caused it. What caused it has nothing to do with the fact that she didn't have powers. I think she just saw it because we see she first sees it when they're taking the picture and she's being left out. She's the one who feels most like an outcast She's, and because she sees the problems in the family, she's, she sees the cracks. The person who has the most pressure, who's buckling, Louisa, is the second to see this issue. And um, the people who don't really see the problems aren't really seeing the cracks. And we don't see the cracks until the families are, you know, having, you know, arguments and issues. So I, I love that this didn't happen because Mirabelle didn't have a gift. And this did not happen. This would not have not happened if Mirabelle had a gift. These are just two things that coincide with each other. And it is impacted by one another, but they're not caused by each other. 
And I really, really like that. And I think that's why this story is special and works so well. And now I'm going to get to Bruno. No, no. So Bruno is just super misunderstood. Like, I know we all got that. Um, man, but with when Dolores is singing about him, she says, I grew to live in fear of Bruno stuttering or stumbling. I can always hear him sort of muttering and mumbling. I associate him with the sound of fallen sand. It's a heavy lift with a gift so humbling, always left Abuela and the family stumbling, grappling with prophecies they couldn't understand. And the townsfolk uh, are like, your fate is sealed when your prophecy's read. I think Camillo uh, may have just seen him in a, in a way that was more menacing because he was so young when Bruno left. Um, he would have been like five, maybe six. Um, yeah, Bruno is just so misunderstood and I actually think this works as kind of a an allegory for mental illness uh in a way that's really sad like sometimes people see someone as being menacing or kind of dark or mischievous or they see him in a very negative light I guess I should say and when this person just is not like sometimes people are viewed as being bad because they're not well and that's really awful and unfair and it's just because they're misunderstood uh, a lot of people i saw were saying that he had like they relate to him um with with like the kind of tics that he had regarding like the superstitions and that's very similar to ocd so a lot of people with ocd are relating to him i should say that whatever interpretation you have is not wrong you're always right with whatever interpret however you interpret a character is always right um i'm a big believer in um reader interpretation so I think that's always really important and that's another reason why I like this story because you can relate to the characters as I said earlier um and to the themes in so many different ways it can be relatable to so many different people and that's uh makes it more relevant and really really you know lovely story that to me just really really hit very well um Bruno broke my heart <laughs> and with that I kind of wanted to just leave it with there's so many Disney stories that have characters that should be really effing traumatized by the things that they're going through. Um, I think Beauty and the Beast is the biggest one for me. Not Belle, but the Beast. I mean, this is like what a ten-year-old kid who's transformed into a like a what looks like a monster and what he perceives as a monster, and he has so much self-loathing because of that. And he spends ten years alone in a castle, forgotten, surrounded by what in any other case would be inanimate objects that are possessed by people who were formerly his staff. Um, and people always focus on Belle, but like think of the trauma that that human being would incur because of that curse. Or, you know, Cinderella lived in a horribly abusive situation. Snow White lived in a horribly abusive situation. Like all these characters, Tangled, uh, Rapunzel, she is the first character that seemed to have any kind of, of personality trait that would make sense based on how on her upbringing they had this like magical ability to just like phase off abuse and uh trauma that i think is honestly inappropriate um but with bruno we see he actually has behavior that would reflect you know living alone for 10 years that would reflect being socially awkward of having a gift that people didn't understand of being kind of the person in the family that just gets kind of blamed and you know shunned um and i really like that and i hope that going forward you know disney learns that characters like this become very beloved very quickly because we relate more to them because they seem more real and more authentic and there's something really lovely and special about that. And so I hope going forward that, you know, you don't need to have a character that's like comatose with trauma per se, but like just one that reflects a little more what they actually went through because that is more, I don't know, like I said, authentic and relatable. So with that, I'll just conclude that I really, I think, overanalyzed this and I really love this movie again and I think everyone should watch it at least once and obviously the songs are great and the movie is really beautiful and I hope going forward Disney realizes that people like the representation this brought, people like seeing um, you know different communities and seeing these stories that aren't just like 
another, it's not just a Hollywood ending, you know what I mean? That has some a, a message that's real and beautiful and yeah, I loved it and I, any theories you have, let me know. Super down to hear it and thank you so much for listening to my ramblings and peace out, bye.